So I'm just going to start to record this. Like guys, it's going to take us about 40, 45 minutes. And this is a very advanced presentation. So even if you don't know trading, even if you're not investing with real money, but you're like practicing on demo, or just trying to figure out the best way to trade and just trying different strategies, there's no such a, such a thing as a strategy in terms of how you're going to trade. There's just one way. And that way, or at least the way that's going to get you to the consistency that you need, even if you want to do stocks, commodities, even if you just want to be only trading oil or just gold or the FX or anything, it's going to be the price. All right, that's it, the price. The price is everything. So I'm also going to share with you my, you know, this, my real account. And... You know, in order to understand how not to use indicators and how not to use, um, you know, stop loss, of course, that the setting of your account has to be with hedging allowed. I don't know if you know what that means. So first of all, we're going to talk about, you know, how not to use indicators. You're going to focus on the price. There's only two ways to understand the price. There's only buy prices and there's only sell prices. Once you have this information, when the market gives you buy prices and when it gives you sell prices, then you can set up your entry, your entry levels. So basically you need the entry price or the price of the execution. Then you need your target price. That's how I call it, the target. And also you need the expiration price. And this is the key moment, the expiration price, the key moment where you're going to take some losses here when the prices are going to expire. Let's say you buy, your execution is fine, your target is fine, you're doing okay. Then let's say that you enter, your entry into a buy price, then doesn't make it to the target, but then that transaction expires. So you need to understand also when the transaction is going to expire and what to do with that. Now. Of course, when I say not to use a stop loss, we need a plan B. And the only plan B, in case something, you know, everything goes south for the market, you must be able to hedge. To hedge means that you buy and then you can sell right away. Or that you, you sell and then you can buy right away. This is to hedge. It was invent invented on the 70s. There's nothing new on hedging. It was invented actually because the market has a lot of volatility and the prices were just changing so much. And that's when the market started like, instead of taking losses and losing money, they start hedging. It's that simple. Now, of course, not every day is a hedging day. It's just a plan B in case something goes really bad for the market. So you have to hedge in order to lock out your account. Now, how to log up your account and how you do all of that, I can show you a few other, a few other um, presentations that we already have in our channel. Let me show you really quick before I forget. Because, of course, it's a kind of short presentation for me to tell you everything about it, but it's going to give you the basics, you know. So, you go here. You go to the... Um, yeah, I'm going to also share the link with you. So now here, you're going to see plenty of other videos. So you may want to go and see the ones that says price action, price map, scalping, um, what else? Um, the, is there a problem with the mic? Is that even better? Okay, so yeah, I'm going to share with you two things here. That's the YouTube channel, and you can find this on YouTube. And there, of course, like I said, we have plenty of other videos that is going to help you to complement the information that I'm going about to give you. And the main, you know, the main thing that you're going to understand here is how not to use a stop loss. Stop losses are just to kill your account slowly. 
it's well known that volatility in the FX market on the CFDs market, stop losses are not an option, are definitely not an option. So you got to understand that one way or another, a stop loss is going to get activated. So we all know that the FX market is the one that I'm going to use to give you examples on how to actually learn how to read the market. So the first thing you want to do is to understand the map price and how to identify buy prices and how to identify sell prices. And secondly, and most importantly, if you're not going to use stop loss, when to hedge. And then when the hedge is active, what to do with it? Basically, when to start taking losses, because you have to be able to take losses if you're not going to use a stop loss. So the emotional side of this, of course, has to be also very well understood that the money is just energy flows. You're going to make a lot of profit. You're going to take some losses too, but that's the way it is. There's no professional trader that you're going to read the brief of or the summary of the transaction of a month. And it's going to be all winning. Or you're not going to see any SL on that you know, summary. You're not going to see that. You're going to see serious like good moves of profits. Then you're going to see some losses. You're going to see a lot of profits. You're going to see some losses and so on. That's how the summary of a professional trader looks like. You're not going to see activation of, you know, take profits or stop losses. But yes, you're going to see some hedging activations, meaning buy stops or sell stops. So before I start talking about the hedge, I'm going to go for the buy price and the sell price. I'm going to go through the hedge and then when you start taking losses. So let's go to the platform. Of course, um, all of you must be familiar with the MT4, the MT4 platform is the one I use because I can install my pivot points. If you don't have your pivot points, then that's also one of the things that you must have in your account. Pivot points. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you need the indicator, what I can do is like I can share another link with you. It's a link where I share my transactions. It's a chat basically. So what I'm going to do is like I can share that link. I can paste the indicator there, then you can download it into your computer and then you can install it in your MT4. So this other link that you're going to see here is to download that indicator. So we are set now. And uh, I'm not going to, of course, explain uh, people points and how to use them. So there you go. Now on that link, I'm just going to give three minutes so you can get to that link. I'm going to paste there. I'm going to paste there. It's just a Telegram. It's just a Telegram chat where you're going to see all my transactions of the day. If you scroll up, I'm sure that you're going to see the indicator, the pivot point. Then someone of the back office of Watch My Train is going to remove you, but this is only for you to have the uh, indicator and to know what indicator you need. So let's go to the platform. All you see here, you don't see volume indicator. You don't see any moving average. You don't see any Bollinger, any like no indicator whatsoever. The only thing you're going to see is that these yellow lines, which are prices and market ranges. And for me means the hedging levels and means also the expiration levels, and I'm going to explain that from scratch. So, you know, from the beginning, it's there. The telegram is actually there. So you all guys got it. It's on the chat. So if you see in the chat, there's a link there. You copy, you paste it in your Explorer. Um, if you cannot open it, the only thing we can do is that you can write to info at watchmydream.com and someone from back office is going to send you the indicator. So just write on the subject on the email, type 
table points and that's it. And that email info at watchmydream.com and someone's going to send it to you. All right. So all you need is the indicator, the people point. That's your first step to understand price action. Secondly, we're going to set up a strategy. And third, no, I'm not going to email to anyone. I don't do that. You email to info and they're going to send it to you, the indicator. But just write on the um, subject of, of the email, people point. So this is, uh, and if you want to understand people points, you can go to the channel. And I'm sure they're going to find an English. Uh, there's got to be some uh, presentation English. So you may want to go through some of them. You know, there's like plenty of video here. And try to go for those that says people points and then you know, you know how to use them. So now, this is the thing here. The thing is, and we all know, that once you enter in the market, the volatility is going to activate your stop loss. We all know that once you buy or sell, the market is going to move around your buy transaction and your sell transaction at least 20, 25, maybe 30 pips. And we all know that to set up a stop loss at 15 pips or 20 pips is absolutely unrealistic because, of course, the market is going to move around it. And it doesn't mean that your transaction is wrong or you just did a false entry or you just move, you know, a little bit in advance of the market. You buy before you should and you sell, you know, before you should and stuff like that. A transaction is a transaction. Everything else is a matter of risk and how you deal with your emotions and how you deal if the market goes around it. So step number one. And all you need to understand is this. The market always has a projection. You can call it trend if you like. i rather use the word projection. And a projection means where the market is basically going. Because if you talk about trend, a trend is a concept to me for a year. Like I have to see a year back and then I see, okay, well, the trend was up or the trend is down. But when we talk about projection is when we all know that we are in a bull market or we are in a bear market. So let's talk about the pound, for example, and we all know that we are into a bear market. And the euro, same thing, we are in a bear market. And regarding the dollar, we are in a bull market. This is the projection. So if you want to be safe in the market, you want to trade following the projection. So basically, if the market opens for buyers one day, it doesn't mean that you're going to sell. It means that you can buy, but only and only on an intraday basis and only very carefully. Because we all know that what is taking the pound up and what is taking the euro up, it is only news is on the speculation is only that the pound and the euro pound and euro are not doing anything in terms of monetary policy and that's what actually changed the market projection the dollar instead we are in a bull market and they are working on a monetary policy they are in a high cycle of rates so that makes the entire difference and you can take that example to the Australian. You can take that example to New Zealand, the currency. You can take that example to anything. So you have to respect the projection of the market on any cross that you want to work with. So let's take, for example, the pound dollar and the euro dollar. And you also can take these examples to anything you like, any cross. When I talk about effects, it's because it's, it's fast and it's the only way to actually explain how not to use in the indicators and not to use the stop loss because it's very fast, it's very dynamic. So I'm sure that if I enter into the market now, I can explain you right away what's going on and I can explain in five minutes how you set up a strategy and I can also explain you what's going to be your entry point, your target, and your expiration, and why not to use the stop loss. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to here, which is, like I said, it's my account. 
So, uh, what happened today, I go for one hour, just to explain really quick what happened today. I'm going to make it this bigger. So, of course, the market today with the euro dollar, we were selling, we were shorting today, down to here. This is the activity that we did in the morning with the euro dollar. And you can also verify that information here in the Telegram because I have somebody um, in my, you know, that's also following my transactions. And it's being typed here, everything I said. So you can verify that. All of this that you see here, I'm a scalper. Of course, I do a scalping, right? So everything you're going to see here, it's, of course, the activity of the day. And we started very early because the market was very active. So you see from here, the activity, as you can see, January 22nd. And, you know, Euro dollar, I said, well, target, close the sale transaction. Then I said, be careful with the pound. And then I said, we're going to say here to here, you know, dollar guy close the buy transaction on the pound, move the hedge. I'm going to explain what this means, move the hedge. Then I said, if drops to this price, we close the hedge. I'm going to also explain, this is a key moment for a scalper. And when you, when you don't use a stop loss, this little thing, explanation here, has to be very clear. And then I said, we need confirmations. And then we go to sale. And then we bought dollar Canadian. So all of this, yeah, it's scalping transactions of today's. And as you can see, there's a lot of activity. Once I'm done of the day, then I record on podcast. And then I explain what's going to happen. And then I say, okay, well, this is going to happen next. You can also find it on Spotify. You can find it on 10 different platforms. So in five minutes, I'm telling you what's going to happen next with the market. And then we keep trading because today was very active. So then I say, okay, well, we're going to buy the pound. You know, the hedge is done. New buy stop here to here. And then I said, we're going to sell the pound here to here. This never happened. But of course, I also explained why we did not go to sell there. The pound after the closing, we were only buying on the pound dollar. And then I said, there was just like, like an hour ago. You know, euro dollar, the buyers are done. Euro dollar target, pound, low volume, move the hedge to here. So let's, let's see what's the result of all this activity. Like I said, this is all scalping transactions. So in order to make it simple for you, the scalping that we did today on the euro dollar, it was here. We got to sell and then we were waiting for the market to move up and to buy. And the market closes for buyers today at the closing. So the full idea when you are a scalper and you want to take opportunities you do it in the day because we all know if the volume is good then you can go ahead and just trade at any moment but ideally we trade only on the first two hours of the opening market and you choose european market or the u.s market but if you ask me what's the best time to trade effects or commodities or index the first two hours at the opening market. Now, we have a huge challenge here, and that is volatility, and of course, spread. And these two little guys here, the volatility and the spread, of course, are gonna play against you when you try to use a stop loss. And indicators are just too slow. All indicators are just too slow. If you want to be a real good scalper, you have to trade when the market is moving, you want to get those spikes, you know, those fast moves of the market. You can't just wait for the moving average of the 14 minutes to move above or below your price. You can't just do that. You know, that's all school. Like there's no scalper today that uses indicators. Everyone is moving to price action. Everyone is just, you know, doing their best to understand the price of the market. And like, I'm going to try in 20 minutes to explain that to you. So let's say that I log into my, my account. I want to trade euro dollar and the pound dollar. The, you know, 
the more specialized you are, the better you're going to get over time. So don't try to do everything. You're going to see a lot of uh, crosses and things in here. But honestly, I just focus on two in one day. I only focus on two. I can just be focusing on, I don't know, for example, the dollar, just dollar Canadian, dollar yen one day. I can be focusing only on the euro dollar and the pound dollar one day. That's it. And if you're going to do gold, just do gold, only gold. Do, do not try to combine gold with any other crosses. Just focus on gold and be an expert on gold. Same as oil, Texas oil. If you want to do oil, just focus on just that one. Don't try to do everything. So in terms of the strategy, so let's say that, you know, the time that is right now, the market is moving on the euro dollar. Looks like the volume is good. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to do a transaction right now. So in one hour, I see what the market did. First, I need the projection. What happened with the euro dollar today? So my conclusion is that this is European activity. One, two, three, four, four hours of activity, good volume on the euro. So those four hours, the market was buying on the European side. This is Europe. And this is the US. So US was into the short and the, the um, European market was into the long for the, Euro, for the Euro dollar. And then before the closing, in the middle of the US session, the market was buying the Euro dollar. So this is the activity of today. Europe, US, US. Closing of the market. The question is, okay, well, what, you know, what's the past is the past. I want to know if I can sell now the euro dollar or if I can buy. But to gain perspective, you have to understand that the market is closing for buyers on the euro dollar. If this is the opening of Europe and this is the opening of the US market, what the price is telling you now, that all the market is buying the euro dollar. They're all buying the euro. They're not selling. They're not getting out of you the dollar. So that's the perspective that you need. And then you go to 15 minutes, and that's when the action starts. You may want to ask, well, then why not to use one minute or five minutes? To me, one minute and five minutes is too noisy. I can't get enough you know, perception of what's going on. So I use 15 minutes, period. And then I go to 15 minutes, and the first information I need and write this down, the first information you need when you trade price action is the closing of the previous 15 minutes. The closing of the previous 15 minutes. That's the first information you need to read the price and to avoid all the pain of using uh, indicators and all of that. So that information is right here. That information is right here. So the previous 15 minutes on the euro dollar, the closing was right here, 113.70. I'm sure that you understand about candlesticks and when the candlestick open closes and all of that. And if you don't, then you can just go ahead and search candlesticks. But this is the closing that I'm, go, I'm going after right here, 113.70. So you have your first information. The previous closing of the 15 minutes is 113.70. The second, the second question you need is that, is that a buy price or is that a sale price? And that's when you start thinking in terms of strategy. And the question is, can you buy regarding the closing that you had here or you can sell? Is that the 13.70 a buy price or a sale price? And in order to understand that, you must see how the price action was in the past. So you have the, your closing was 1370, uh, fine. So now you put a line there, a yellow line, a red line, whatever, to the closing, 1370. And you go in the past. And then you see here that that price, the market was not holding. The market on the euro dollar was not actually not holding up. I don't see any market above the 1370 in the past. I don't see it. I don't see it. Okay, so the first question you had is, is that a buy price? The answer is no. Is that a sell price? Well, let's see. The market from 17, 113.70, it drops. 
but it already did. It made it to the target, which is 113.66. So that cell transaction that just happened is in the past. You cannot do it. But that was a perfect sale transaction to do. And your answer was your target, 113.66. And you can see right here. I'm not looking at the, at the, at the uh, present moment. I'm looking at the historical levels. And I know that 13.70 is actually a sale price. And the target is right here. Why is the target here? Because the market is now going to hold it. It's not going to drop more than this. So that's my target period. And for an scalper, is that a good transaction? Looks like it is. You know, like three, four, five pips is not that worth, but that sale transaction, that's it. You cannot do it anymore. Okay, then you're in the market now. You got to read the price. It's a sale price. You got the target here because the market is just not dropping below these levels. So let's say that the sale transaction here, you missed it. And this is what, what you want to trade, like I said, here down to here. But it's already done. The market already consumed, was buying from here up to here, so you cannot sell anymore. You want to trade on these levels, on these spikes, on these fast moves. So reaction is a key. Reaction into the market is, is a key moment. You have to react sometimes. You can sometimes you can't just let it happen. You gotta react. You know, you got to sell. The market was super fast to your target. You close it. You're gonna, if you really want to be in a scalper, sometimes you have just no time to just grab a coffee. You know, there's like seven to 10 transactions you do in like one hour. And if you're lucky enough and we're trading interest rates or we're trading like, you know, those NFP high impact information, then in one shot you can get 100 pips. But that's a different story. We're day traders, we do scalping. So, sell transaction price and target, that's it. Now, if you see here, let me show you why any stop loss will never work. As you can see here, on the euro dollar, the price was up to here, 113.73. So, for a common trader, this closing, it was already a sell transaction. The confirmation was good. So you got to sell. If you think in terms of a stop loss, you may say, okay, well, I'm going to put a stop loss five pips above it. Three pips, too low. Five pips, maybe it's not too much, but it is kind of far. Whatever it is, if we're, we're talking about the closing of the market and your spread got widened, then all the stop losses in the area are going to be activated, all of them, because there's, still activity above your entry price and it's fine what's important to you like i said is the closing of the previous 15 minutes that is your first sign to actually understand what to do in the market that's your first sign. so this sell trade that's it that's done you cannot do anymore you got to sell you got to close it boom out so now we have to see what's going to happen next so what's going on now we said that the market was closing for buyers on the euro dollar. So, of course, if I got to sell here, then to here, it was a good, you know, pretty good transaction if I had a good spread, yes. But what's going to happen now? Well, now you can't do anything. Now you have to wait for the next 15 minutes to close and to tell you if you can sell again or instead if you're going to buy. But once the 15 minutes are done, you enter, you close it, that's it. You wait for the next 15 minutes. Let's grab another example. While we wait for, because there's been only three minutes, so we have to wait now for the next 15 minutes. And if you know that everyone is buying the euro, the euro closed for buyers. And so everyone's buying the euro. So you got a pre, you know, sell transaction here, you scalp it. And then let's say that the market was all the way up to 113.73. So I'm going to go for one hour. I say, okay, well then if all the market is buying the euro, why not to buy now? I know it's going to keep moving up. But the thing is that the projection over the euro, it's not a bull market. We're not a bull market. So it's not that you can just buy because the market closes for buyers today. Because it's happened in the past and then the buyers are done and then it drops and it's going to make a new low. 
So once you hit a new high of the day, you got a sell transaction at the closing, consider yourself lucky. That's it. Because now we have two options. Either the market is going to go through this high right here. So we are able to probably buy or the market is going to drop to our 1366 target, previous target, and we are back to sellers and we might be able to sell again. But this is not a moment to think now. Your transaction is done. You close it. That's it. Now we move to the next one. So we have to wait now. If it goes over this high that just happened or the market drops again. So we get to sell. Let's take another example. Let's take the uh, pound dollar. So what happened with the pound? As you saw, I never said, you know, moving average. I never said volume. I never said, um, I don't know, any dodge or any name of candlestick. Because candlesticks, you have to trade inside the candlestick. Once the candlestick is done, you don't care the name of it. You want to trade inside the candlestick on the formation of the volume in here. It doesn't matter if it is the doji, if it is, I don't know, those names. And I can tell you I know all of them because I made already my mistakes in the past. And then I said, well, who cares? You know, it's the price. So we were focusing on the wrong side of the market all the time, like trying to figure it out here with those little, you know, like, you know, Fibonacci and the, the uh, flags and the inverted flags and the triangles and all of that things and going anywhere because everything was here all the information was actually here but we didn't know we were trying to figure out that how this here actually is shaping this and how we can just figure it out what's going on here regardless the activity here is actually the opposite it's absolutely the opposite but of course you have to be sitting with the a lot of mentors in New York to get to that conclusion. Of course, you know, banks and they don't use stop loss. They don't take like a loss like that. They take a loss when they have to. They don't take a loss because the indi or indicator or because they place a pending transaction and they say, okay, my risk is down to here. My risk is up to there. They don't think like that. They think in terms of price. And if they have to take a loss, that's what they do. And if they have to hedge because the market goes against, that's what they do. Period. Now, let's see the pound here, what happened today. So the activity of the price, I want to delete all these yellow lines. So it was right here. The market, this is Europe, because we have, of course, um, an employment of UK, and we, got, we had a possible agreement on the Brexit, so it was pushing the pound. This is Europe, and this is US. Some sellers on US and all buyers on Europe market. And what about the closing? Again, all buyers. The market closes for buyers, the pound dollar today. Okay, so I know I have at least the projection of the day. Buy pressure over Europe, sell pressure over the US, and then at the closing, everyone was buying the pound. Great. Now, let's say I have some time now, and I have, I don't know, like 30 minutes, so I can trade something. So I go to the pound dollar, and I go where the magic happens on the 15 minutes. So I see that, of course, the volume is very low. But let's find out what the, the previous 15 minutes is telling me. And it's right here. What's that price? It's 129.64. 129.64 is the previous closing of the 15 minutes. Is that a buy price or is that a sell price? We need to go to the past and see what to do with the price. So um, it's kind of confusing here because I see that the market is not holding, not holding above it. As you can see, it's not holding above it. But also I see that the market has a very important high in here. And if it drops to here, I have a pretty good chances to sell. There's a very important high in there. But today the market closed for buyers, so I can just sell because it's at the very highs, it's at the highs of the area. So what I'm going to do with the pound dollar is to understand, yeah, looks like a pretty good sell price, but um, what if the market then goes up to here, to uh, 29.70, 71? 
And if it goes up to here, guess what? It's going to take me up to here. So the 29.88 and probably 29.90. 29.88, 29.90. So I see that this is a kind of tricky transition in here that I have to be very careful. It could be a very good sell price or my sell transaction could be wrong. And if it goes up to 129.70, it's going to take me up to possibly 29.90. And this is the key moment where a supposedly great sell price, great sell transaction fails. And I'm going to tell you what to do with that. So let's say that your sale price is good and your target, of course, is going to be here, 29.54. So you get your 10 pips in here. Not that bad. Great. So let's say that you sell and your target is 29.54. I go to my 15 minutes again because I was just looking at the, at the highs and since we're very important highs, I'd rather go for a one hour. So the answer here is like this. First, is that a sale price? Well, it is. Second, what's your target? My target is 29.54. Great. What are you going to do if the price goes up to 29.70? Well, two options. Either I take the loss, so I close my sale transaction at 29.64, or since I say, well, it's not that much, so I can just keep my sale transaction and then I can buy here. I want 20, um, 29.70 up to 29.90, so why not? So you decide, either you take that loss and then you buy, or you keep the sale transaction and then you hedge. Basically, you're going to place there a buy a stop because you want a buy transaction to be activated there. So it's going to take you up to 129.88, possibly 129.90. But one thing is certain, it's very, it's like 100% certain that the market is probably not going to give you the target. It's probably not going to drop from here. So you may not want to sell, even though you have a good sale price, you identified it correctly, looked like the target is good enough, your strategy is fine. But if today the market closes for buyers and everyone was buying the pound today, what are the chances that you can gain your 10 pips at this time? where all market is closed, actually. Well, still the missing the U.S. closing, but the European market is done. So I don't think that the market is going to get out of the pound. If they're holding the pound, it's because they're holding the pound. They expect the pound to move up more. So I wouldn't say. Honestly, I rather missed this sale transaction of 10 pips and then wait for more sellers to come. And one thing is certain. If I place my buy stop at 29.70, you have to consider the spread too. So you may want to put your buy stop at 129.72, 73 because of the spread. And that is a good transaction. 29.72 up to 129.88. That's a good buy range. So you can take that one, but don't try to sell from these levels even if it is a good 10 pips and looks like everything's going to be fine. But if you're good on hedging and you want to sell and then you have your buy stop above, then of course you can go ahead and do it. Now, what's next with this? We have the 29.54. That's the next level. So if you drop down to here, you can go ahead and sell from here down to here. That's your 10 pips. Let's say that you got to sell and then you close the transaction. The possibilities are that the market goes from the, um, let's say, let's go to the historical levels and you have to find that price, that level. Basically, your previous target, 29.54. So your target is there. You sell, you close your transaction, you sell transaction there. And then from there, the market is going to try to buy again at 29.54, 29.50. So what you're going to do next, you're going to sell below 129.50 down to 129.39. That's your next sell transaction. Knowing that the market, of course, is here. It's here at the highs. So you're selling at the highs. And when you're selling at the highs, you have to understand that the market is at the highs. So they're, they're holding transactions. They're keeping 
open their buy trades. When you sell at the highs, you have to understand that you're, the market is keeping their buy transactions. So you must be very careful with that. Now, if the market gets out of the highs here on the pound dollar, basically below 129.50, dropping down 29.38, your sell transaction is absolutely fine. And from there, it's going to keep dropping. So at any moment I mentioned, you know, any indicator, at any moment I mentioned stop loss, you manage the price the way I'm just saying. So the buy stops and the sell stops are the transactions they, that you're going to use to hedge. So when you buy, you identify your closing of the 15 minutes, you catch the buy price and you enter the market buying. And let's say the price drops and drops and drops. I'm going to show you an example of that. So the way to hedge is basically having a sell stop, having a sell stop into a sell price to catch the market. And I don't know if you understand how the hedging works in your account, but it's going to lock it. It's going to lock your account out. That's how, that's the impact that it has in the margin in your account. So when you buy, you hedge with a sell stop. And when you sell, you hedge with a buy stop. That's the hedging process. Let's go for the one example when the market, actually you're trying to use the opposite. So since the 15 minutes are done, let's see what we got. Let's go to the Euro dollar first. Euro dollar, 15 minutes. We have the closing 1367. 1367, is that a buy price or is that a sell price? Well, looks like it kind of looks like a sell price, but I'm not going to sell because the market is just not giving enough volume. So I don't think I'm going to sell. I'm going to wait until the market can drop a little bit more down to probably 1366. So I get to sell there, but still the volume is very low and it may drop down to 1363. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for the euro to drop here, 113.66, and then I sell down to 113.63. I don't get much from this. So probably as a strategy, it's just not good. I'm going to pay more spread and commission than the profit I'm going to get. So I don't think it's a good idea. I'm not going to take it. But that's basically the idea of a trader. You have to gain your three prices, entry price, target and expiration price. If you cannot get these three in like five minutes, of course, take practice, but once you get the practice, then that's it. You know that you're not able to sell here the euro. It's just not worth the transaction. So you're not going to take it. You know it's going to drop, but it's not worth to take the sell if it touches here. Let's see the pound. Pound dollar, the closing is just not enough. This 2961, it's not enough, not enough to anything to sell. And we all know the buyers where they are. It's on 2973, 72, yes. But to sell is not worth it. So we're not going to take anything there. Let's go to dollar Canadian, see if we got something going on here. I go for one hour. And the activity of dollar Canadian today was, of course, just the market buying, European market buying, US market. Drop a, a little bit, but then it was up to the highs again, so it went up. So dollar Canadian, the market was just in two buyers today, only buyers. Let's find out the closing of the previous 15 minutes, and the closing is right here. It's at uh, 133.43. So 15 minutes close, I put my line in there, and then I decide if I'm going to take it or not. The 133.43, is that a buy price or is that a sale price? It is actually um, a buy price. Let's go to the past. I have my yellow line there. And I had to find if I can buy or sell. It's a transition too, but of course the market closed for buyers. So I need to understand if I buy there, what's going to be my target. And look, this has more sense to me. That was December last year. And the closing of 133.43 took the market on dollar Canadian up to 133.54.56. So I don't see any chances for sellers in here. The market is holding the dollar right now and it's probably going to go up to 133.54. 
Let's go back on time, 15 minutes, and let's see if we can set up a strategy here. So if I buy on that price, on that closing, 13343, then that, of course, looks like a buy price. Can I buy? Yes, absolutely. The market just was closing for buyers. We have the target here, and it's a buy price. But the thing is that we have 13347 and 13350. The market was not able to hold above 13350 on dollar Canadian. But if I'm able, if I'm able to buy now on that price and I can resist for the price to maybe drop down to here and have some volatility around my transaction, then fine, you can go ahead and buy. But may, you had to, like I said, trying to understand that if the market was not holding at the 3350, it's going to probably drop a little bit from your entry level. But that's okay. You cannot use any stop loss. If anything, you're going to hedge and lock your account with a sell stop below the lows of today, below the lows of today. And that means here. So you're going to have a sell stop below 13329 while you wait for your buy transaction up to your target 13354 no stop loss necessary and i never mentioned any indicator i just know that that's a good buy price and that's the target and you're fine buying but the volatility it could be also kind of important let's go to another example let's go to gold so what happened with gold today i'm gonna Delete my yellow lines here. I have my pivot point. In one hour, the activity of gold was, we have European market go to buy, the US market go to sell, the market closes at the opening of Europe. So I may say that all the market is buying with gold and the market closed for buyers. Let's go to 15 minutes. Let's find out if we can buy or if we can sell. Previous 15 minutes. This is the price, I put my line, 1283.85. So am I able to buy there on gold that's in one hour? Well, looks like it's not that good idea because from that line, I see the market not holding. It's just in the past, it couldn't hold today. Let's see more historical levels. Well, they could hold here. So it looks like not that bad idea to buy gold from here. And I need to know my target now. So I see the market goes up to here, goes up to here, goes up to here. So this is my full market range with gold on these levels from here up to here. So it looks pretty intense, looks pretty good. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Looks really good by price. So I go back on time, I go to my 15 minutes, and the answer is, is that a buy price? Yes. And where's your target? Your target is up here. So you may want to buy, you identify your buy price, your target is 12.86 with 74. So what happens if uh, the market drops and the market just turns around or whatever? Well, you want to hedge, like we all said. You buy, you identify your buy price, you got your target. And if everything goes south, you want to hedge. Let's say the hedging goes kind of close to the lows of the day. So you want to hedge around these two levels. Not too far, because if something happens and the gold drops heavily, you know, you cannot have a plan B that far. So you may want to be able to hedge close enough or the market levels of today. So that will be 1281 with 37. So one thing I do, um, I use an, an application on my phone where I put price alerts. So let's say that I want to have a transaction overnight, for example, I want to sell overnight euro, sell overnight the pound. So what I do when I have a transaction overnight, I use my price alert on my phone and then I put the hedge price on that level. So I don't have to worry about it. So I know when the hedge is active. So everything goes you know, against my transaction. I know when the hedge is going to be activated into my account. And I, you know, I recommend that for you to use.
you know, because you don't want to be sleeping and then you hold the transaction overnight because, you know, it's going to keep moving up or moving down. You don't want to close it. But then something happens. And you want to know exactly when your hedge is going to be active in your account. You can just have a hedge there. So, you know, dollar Canadian is for buyers moving up. The euro dollar, we couldn't do anything. We were waiting what to do next. So for now, you know, like dropping to the previous target, the sellers are fine. Pound dollar, we didn't do anything neither, just low volume, but we know where the buyers are. So we do have a buy stop here at 129.73, 72. Dollar Canadian, the market is just in two buyers. Gold, the market is also in two buyers. And let's see dollar yen, what's going on now. You repeat the process. You have the 15 minutes. You need the previous closing. The previous closing is a 109.21. And what was the activity today on the dollar yen? Well, Europe sellers, US buyers, US sellers. So all the market closed for sellers on dollar yen today. All the market. But let's say I have enough time for just a transaction. So you read the previous 15 minutes closing, 109.21. The question is, is that a buy price or is that a sale price? So you go to one hour. We need to find out that yellow line if we can actually sell or we can buy. We need to gather information. So it looks like from there it's going to keep dropping. It's going to keep dropping. We don't see buyers or we don't see the market holding dollar yen on these levels anymore. So it looks like the market is buying, um, selling. And if it goes up, then of course, this is the expiration price, the 109.29, because if it goes up to 109.29, regarding the historical levels, that is going to take the market up to 109.35. So. Once you gather your information, go back to 15 minutes. And this is finally what we have. So the closing is a good sell price. Looks like it is a good sell price, but you're not going to sell now. What you're going to do is that you're going to wait for the market to touch again the 109.21. So you're going to sell there. And of course, that your first target is right here, the 109.17, because that's the lowest closing that we have in the area. So this is your first scalping transaction. It has to touch here, and if it does, you sell down to here. 109, 17, maybe down to here. But you want to make sure not to have a sell transaction at the lowest level. So you're going to close it before it reaches these shadows in here, these two lines in here. You're going to close it before. What if dollar yen doesn't drop to 109.21, and it goes up, oh, up to 109.28, then that is an absolutely buy price. So what you're going to do is I want you want to buy a 109.28 up to 109.35. That's it. So you have your sell range in here. You have your buy range in here. And if you sell now, this is actually a false transaction. You cannot sell now because your sale is right here. This is the price. Remember that you read the closing of the previous 15 minutes. And if you couldn't sell there down to here, then you're not going to sell now. You must wait until you can drop again to here and you close to your target. And if instead goes up to here, 109.28, you're going to buy up to 109.35. And that's what you're going to do. So I know it looks kind of fast. I know it looks kind of uh, confusing at the times, but this is the pound. Pound dollar now is going to go up to 129.88. Let's see the euro. Euro is there, not for buyers, but not for sellers. So it's just standing there. Dollar Canadian is just for buyers, but make sure that you're going to afford with your account the volatility there because it may drop from here. It may do it. But it may, your transaction, your buy transaction is fine, like I said. So again, this this will recap really quick. So like we all said, we read the 15 minutes closing. 
you must understand the projection, what's going on in the market basically, what is the market buying, are they buying dollars, what is the market shorting, they're shorting the pound, they're shorting the euro. So if you want to buy these two, make sure that you know what you're doing because like I said, it goes up only by rumors, by news, by, but of course the pound is not going to be able to hold the economy on the stage that it's going, even though we have indicators that they're doing fine, but they're not doing anything on the monetary policy. And they need to get into that before the actually currency gets strong enough. Same as the euro. Instead of the dollar, they are working on the monetary policy and they are into a hike cycle. So make sure you understand about monetary policy and the, that's going to give you the projection of the market first. And then on the 15 minutes, you set up your strategy. You need your buy or the sell price first, if you can buy or if you can sell. That's the first information you need, the entry price. The second information you need, of course, is your target. And if your target is not enough to the transaction, don't take it. Meaning if it doesn't go through the five pips or seven pips, then it's not worth the transaction, don't take it. You want to go for those 10, 15, 20 pips. And number three, expiration. Expiration means when is the market giving you that frame where you can hold a transaction, you can keep it. Because sometimes it's just not going to give you enough, you know, um, enough room for you to actually do something with the transaction and then it drops, uh, you know, if you're buying and it drops too hard, then it closes into a sell price and the expiration for you means take the loss or hedge. But you must be good at it. So practice in the, actually this is what I would suggest when there's a, you know, a lot of people acceptable to use stop, to hedge and not to use stop loss, try two different accounts. Try one account using stop loss to 15 pips or 10 pips or whatever you like. And then try another account practicing hedging, practicing hedging and on prime section. And at the end of the month, at the end of the week, see which account is going to give you more profit. And in fact, which account is going to give you actually profit. So the best way to do this, if you're going to accept to go, you know, with the price action and hedging, just try use indicators in one account with the way you're doing right now, and then do another one, practicing price action, identifying your buy price, sell price, expiration, when to hedge, that's it. It's going to take you a lot of practice because you're coming from indicators and stop loss. But trust me, the transition is worth taking it. The transition at the end of the week, at the end of the month, is going to pay you back. All right. All right, guys. So I have to go now. Let me stop the recording.